All right, High Rollers, this is a real pleasure. I feel like our guest today is a guest in my living room each and every weekend. And let me just say, he's invited company, does a superb job in the broadcast booth, bringing us all the PDC action, both the Pro Tour and the Euro Tour. He's probably still buzzing from that history-making performance in Germany by Max Hopp. This guy was behind the mic, and certainly one of the reasons the moment was so special. His call, fantastic. I was on the edge of my seat. He's a writer, podcaster, sports content manager, and of course commentator for the Professional Darts Corporation. Chris Murphy, our guest today. Chris, welcome to the show. Thanks for being our high roller today. Thank you very much. A pleasure to join you for this. Hey, listen, Max Hawk, we'll talk about him in a minute, but what kind of response have you received since that epic final, Max Hawk versus Michael Smith? I mean, what's it been like for you? A lot of play-by-play guys can only dream of a moment like that, right? Yeah, definitely. It's one of those moments that it's just nice to have been there, let alone behind the mic. It was just an incredible moment. The noise in the arena was phenomenal. I've never really seen it. A moment at a venue where it's almost every single person was behind one player to, to win that, that final. And it happened. It was just an absolutely incredible moment. And um, one that I will always remember. And I'm sure that uh, millions of darts fans in Germany will, will look back on as well. You talk about the German crowd. I did a report on that final. I called them the fourth dart. Is that fair? I mean, how tough must it be for an opponent of Max Hopp when the home crowd is just buzzing like that? Uh, I think I think that's a fair assessment of the fourth dart. However, I think it can be equally tough for Max Hopp as well. Um, it depends how he's able to handle that, and I think he'd be the first to admit that he's felt the pressure over, you know, five years. A guy who's only twenty-one has had the pressure of being the biggest hope uh, in German dart since he was sixteen. So um, I think it can be equally tough for him as well, but. He's learned to draw on that, and, and that all came together in that well, the semi-final and the final, I guess. But yeah, it must be really, really difficult for an opponent. Although I think I have heard much worse at times. I think the uh, Blackpool quarter-final between Michael Van Gogh and Phil Taylor last year was very, very tribal, um, for example. So you know, and we're going to see Premier League players in Rotterdam. You know, the, the couple of Dutch players are going to get all that support as well as it did last year. Um, so it's not an exclusive thing to Germany and of course it's very new to them to have a player in a final so of course they were going to get involved but there were times as well when they really reflected the tension and were very very quiet at times even in that final. Well it's one of the things that makes Dart so great the atmosphere you mentioned Rotterdam there I was going to bring it up later but I'll talk about it now Uh, can you describe that sea of orange I mean not just in darts but crossing over to any sport that really is one of the best moments right I mean that crowd will be unbelievable tonight and tomorrow. Yeah, it's something that they've brought to the game that didn't really have in darts before. Just, um, you know, darts has been uh, well known for fancy dress and the party atmosphere and all that, but never really everybody turning up in the same colour, in the same kit, and, and providing that, as you described it very well, a sea of orange, and it will be, it always is just a real spectacle to behold. And, and the, you speak about Max Hopp, the lift that he might get from the German crowds, but the, the Dutch players must just get a huge, huge lift from that. Well, the crowd is certainly one of the reasons that makes darts so special. It's just an electrifying atmosphere. A Max Hopp, he's sitting on 121 after hitting 121 to win the semifinal over Rob Cross, and then he left himself the bullseye, took a deep breath there, paused. I'm wondering what was going through, through your mind. What was your gut telling you? I mean, at that moment, did you think he was going to nail it? Um, I think Max Hopp is a man who's got a reputation even before this weekend hitting bullseye finishes, of course, the the big one in the World Championship against Mervyn King a few years ago. And then even the last European tour, he had a couple of bullseye finishes in a, in a tough match against Roby John Rodriguez. So I always felt that, that there was a big chance. And all the way through the final, I think we made reference to it, Mike Lawrence and myself, in commentary. There was just a sense that there was something special going to happen, even at the very beginning when it had started to look like Michael Smith was going to just kind of run away with it. It was just that little sense that there was something special. And I think had he missed the bullseye, and, and even if he'd come back and won by cleaning up 25, it wouldn't have had as a special feeling. And I just felt, you know, sometimes things are written in the stars, and perhaps that was one of those nights. 
Well, I was on your Twitter feed today. You sent out a couple of tweets. I'd like to read them. An incredible story here as Maximizer 180 crowned German Darts Open champion. This is huge in a nation hungry for a hero. Then you write... What a privilege to have been present for a magical moment. Germany has the champion it has been waiting for. Congratulations, Max Hopp. Now, it really was magical, but can you give us a sense of how big of a deal this is for German darts? I mean, it, it must be huge, right? Well, we know how big the German market is just by the fact that they, they have you know, around 10 events there every year, and generally they sell out. That's not just the European tour events that, you know, holding up to... 3,000 fans, but also you've got the Berlin Premier League now that's holding over 10,000 fans now, and it's, these events are selling out, so we know that much. We know that the audience share during the World Championship is huge, and even German fans coming over to the World Championship, they were, they were buying about a quarter of the tickets to Alexandra Palace over the last couple of years. So we know that the market is huge, and this is a country responding to the game of darts in the way they have without having this huge talent and they didn't have they haven't got a Michael Van Gerwen, they haven't got a Phil Taylor. So someone coming through like Max Hopp, who has had this expectation, who knows where we'll go from here, but just to have a champion in the PDC of any kind is a massive, massive deal for them because all of a sudden they've really got someone to support and that will just make the game explode even more than it already has. I got to tell you, Dawson Merchel, Canadian, that's where I'm at. He just hit a nine darter. Maybe he'll bring some big things here. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you've of course had John Parr in the past, and, and that was massive for Canadian darts. And, you know, it doesn't always need someone to become a world champion. It just needs someone to win things, to do special things like nine dart finishes, and just to create moments that, you know, the fans that were there in that arena and the people that watch it back, because with the benefit of social media these days, the, these videos get shared, you know, thousands, if not millions of times. And the people in Germany will always have that moment, and, and having a a good experience in anything in life is what people go back for. Absolutely. Now, you tweeted out as well the interview with Max Hopp and your colleague Dan Darson, class acts, you called them both. Uh, Hopp in that interview, and it was a great interview, he talked about belief and the fact that he has it now and that he believes he can be the guy. Uh, that's an interesting concept in darts, right? Because there's a lot of talented players out there but some guys, you know, the workman type guys that have that belief, they can also make it. Uh, maybe not necessarily the most talented, but if they believe, anything can happen. Well, I think we've seen that just in the last year with the rise of Rob Cross from, you know, amateur player to world champion in the space of 12 months. Michael Van Gerwen is another example who, who puts the majority of his success down to confidence. Um, the confidence that comes from winning. Um, and obviously that just becomes a, an unstoppable kind of monster that has been created in, in someone like him. But yeah, I think also the likes of Rob Cross and other players winning tournaments gives, in a strange way, other players belief because they stop believing that it's just Michael Van Gerwen and Gary Anderson and in the past Phil Taylor that can win tournaments. But everybody can win tournaments. And I think we saw Mickey Mantle after he won his Pro Tour event summed that up quite nicely. He didn't sort of take all the credit for himself. He said, this is what anybody on this tour is capable of doing. Well, you're right. And if you put the work in, anything can happen on any given day. Opportunities are there. Great job indeed, Chris, on that final. It was electrifying. You were a big part of it. Got to ask you now about the curse of Ross Smith. We hear a lot of talk about it. What's happening on the Euro Tour? I mean, people are coming close, but the nine darters just not happening. Yeah, I was in the commentary box for the Miss Double 12 by Rob Cross, which was, by his own admission and from his reaction afterwards, some distance away. Uh, but it is really, really remarkable. Um, it seems to me like the perfect place for a nine-dart finish to go in. Just a little less pressure, perhaps, for the, for the main protagonist than uh, a big TV event. And you'd think that, you know, it would only be a matter of time before someone hits one. Now, I'm not sure how many of the players are aware of this sort of five-year wait for a nine data on the European tour. But I just wonder if that might flash through the mind at times that they're going to be the man that you know delights the crowd in Germany. I'm sure they will let Rob off this week because they got the ultimate result with Max Holt winning the tournament. But yeah, I mean, it's surely got to happen and it's surely got to happen sooner rather than later. It might be one of those cases where once one goes in, then they will just start firing them in left, right, and center. Yeah, the floodgates will open. Uh, you also recently tweeted, 
Make that three wins on stage in two 180s for me. Sorry, Dan Dawson. I'm stealing your set of darts. I see you also hit a 180 with Joe Cullen's darts. Uh, what's this all about? Are you a pretty good player or what? No, not really, no. Myself and Dan, we have a, a little series that we uh, we play darts. Every time we're commentating together, we will have a game. It's first to six legs. Generally lasts well over an hour. So that's about the standard of play we are. But um, I have hit a, a few 180s in my time. But Dan's got a set of Joe Cullen's darts that um, Joe gave to him. And um, I was just having a throw with them. And over the course of the weekend, just you know, in between matches, I had a couple of 180s with them, so um, I'm putting it down to the darts and not my own ability. Well, I was going to ask you if that picture on Twitter was Photoshop, but I believe you, Chris. I believe you. You hit it. <laughs> okay. Um, now, what's this about the Modus Darts Checkout Challenge? I saw an old video of you on YouTube today, and you did not too bad. You were third behind only Gary Anderson and Michael Van Gerwen. But really, when you think about the checkouts, these guys are throwing so fast these days. You're in the broadcast booth. You have, and obviously you do, you have to know all these checkouts because it happens so fast. Yeah, yeah, that was something that um, the sponsors of the World Championship were doing as a bit of fun at the launch day before the tournament a few years ago. And we were just seeing how many you could get through, I think, in 30 seconds. But yeah, you do, you do need to know the, the difficulty is, you know, that was just giving us a checkout and we could say any way of completing that checkout but the difficulty is now that the players are going so many different ways for the same checkout it's keeping across all them because you might have an idea in your head and then they go somewhere else with a first start and you've got to quickly try and work out what, what they're actually doing that's one of the biggest changes in darts i mean besides the the crowds and the, how massive they are the, the checkout uh, routes i mean so many players trying the double double different i mean we see what michael van gerwen's doing it's almost like he's uh, trying spectacular things for show they're all trying different angles yeah they are i mean i'm i'm a, a big supporter of the double double finish in the right circumstances so if your opponent's on a double and, and you've got a, a finish that can be completed with two darts in by hitting two doubles, to me that makes sense because it's two bigger targets than going for a second treble if you've already hit one in that routine. But I think there are all sorts of checkouts that, you know, even five years ago you were very rarely seeing, I think, things like the one four two where players are going for a couple of treble 17s to leave tops. Shots like that that you weren't seeing often before, but um, even seeing some crazy ones that I really don't understand as well but yeah it is very hard to, to sort of keep across them all but the more that we see them you know the more we'll learn them and uh, I'm sure the more we'll come to understand some of them as well. Well there's nothing worse as a dart player than the realization that you left yourself a shot that is not possible uh, when you have a chance to win the game so counting very important not only as a dart player but in the broadcast booth as well. Uh, we're on the line with Chris Murphy just a few more questions Chris uh, talk about the darts uh, let's talk darts podcast you and Paul Nicholson, I mean, there's a, a great guy. I'm a big fan of his. I love to watch that guy. Uh, there was a time that he was, you know, the bad boy of darts, but he's always entertaining and certainly knowledgeable. Yeah, I owe a lot to Paul Nicholson, actually, because Paul was the first person to to kind of get me involved in darts. When I was at university, as a as training as a sports journalist, um, I contacted Paul for an interview around that time when he was a bad boy of darts, and he, uh, he responded and allowed me to do that for an assignment. And off the back of that, I got involved with Paul's management company and started doing some uh, media work for them, and it's just really taken off from there. So it was nice then, later on, to work with Paul on the podcast and, of course, in commentary for the European Tour events as well, when he when he's not playing in them. And that podcast, really, we, we just thought it was something that was missing at the time and kind of gave us both a little bit of broadcast experience, um, which has obviously worked because we're both commentating now. Um, but we stepped aside when uh, our schedules got a little bit too busy and um, there's plenty of other people producing good stuff in that area too now. Yeah, well, Paul Nicholson, I'd love to see him win a title. I mean, the guy's entertaining, he's knowledgeable, I know he's competitive, and his game is picking up. you got to tell him for me that he's got a fan in Canada. Now, I know you're a writer as well. The backdrop on your Twitter shows an article you penned on MVG. We're going to talk about him in a second. Got to say, the title of that article is great. Michael Van Gerwen is used to inflicting pain. I mean, how true is that? But before we talk about him, uh, what about the writing? You like that? You do a lot of it? And does that help you when you're, you're doing the commentating? Definitely, I think, because it obviously helps with uh, your vocabulary. Um, different writing styles I enjoy. That particular piece was something that I did for um, a national newspaper during the World Championship. But I do other stuff on sometimes for players' websites, um, sometimes for the PDC. Yeah, and I, I really do enjoy writing. Um, I, I write 
as a hobby if I wasn't doing it for a profession. So yeah, I think um, the two fit together very, very well. You recently retweeted a pic uh, from Modus Darts, two young dart players, basically suggesting that the state of the game is good, the future is bright. Max Hop, 21, Dimitri Vanderberg, Corey Cadby. I see Nathan Rafferty just got signed by Target Darts. These guys are so young, and they're so good these days. I mean, I imagine a day where if you don't hit a 12 darter, you're going to lose. I, I mean, where does it go? Yeah, it is quite incredible if you ever have the... Uh pleasure to go to one of the development tour events or even now that you can see the uh, the statistics on dark connect on the website there that the standard from the young players is, is absolutely frightening now obviously some of them then fail to replicate that straight away when they step up into the um, senior ranks but some don't there are a couple of players that have already claimed fantastic wins against some of the top players i think bradley brooks one of the players who reached a uh, a development to a final at the weekend has already had victories against the likes of Dave Chisnell after after getting his two cards. So, yeah, it is really, really frightening. I don't think we've quite seen anyone yet come through at the same level that Michael Van Gerwen did when he was 16, 17, but you never know when they're going to spring up. Well, I'll tell you what, I mean, with Corey Cadby on the scene, uh, Max Hop winning, so many young guys, Michael Smith always in contention. Uh, I think he's got the skill to win a world championship. The Alley Pally over the next few years is going to be one place to watch a darts match, I'll tell you that. All right, we're saving the best for last, Michael Van Gerwen. I mean, how well do you know this guy personally? What is it about him besides his sheer skill that allows him to top the charts when it comes to darts? I thought he was going to win in Germany. I mean, I think he's going to win every time he plays a tournament. I mean, he's that good. I mean, he's special, right? Yeah, well, he thinks he's going to win every time he plays a tournament. And I think that kind of answers your question. He's just got that undeniable, unflappable self-belief that when he walks into an arena, whether that be, you know, a Barnsley Leisure Centre for a, a Pro Tour event or Alexandra Palace for the World Championship, he walks in and he sees the first prize as his and if he doesn't get there, he sees that he feels like he's almost lost money that weekend because he was earmarking that that first prize as his. Um, but yeah, I've known Michael um, since I since I broke into working in darts around six seven years now. Initially, some of my work was with his management company, the same one as Paul Nicholson. So I used to work as his press officer. I'm still involved as a, a consultant on social media and media matters too. Um, so I know Michael very well. He manages to keep himself fairly grounded because he is a sporting phenomenon. And I think sometimes, you know, we don't appreciate, as perhaps with Phil Taylor, how his achievements translate across the rest of sport. A couple of years ago, um, for me, he was the best sportsman in the world when he had that incredible record of winning like 25, 26 titles in one year. But yeah, he's... Obviously, it's his talent, but also his belief and his attitude. He's just got that killer instinct. He just wants to win. He's got that that all great sportsmen have, that you know anything but victory is not an option in his mind. Well, listen, man, enjoy the darts tonight. Uh, do you play a role on Premier League night, or are you at home watching? Sometimes I will go to the Premier League nights. I've got, obviously got involvement with work with uh, some, some things around every darts tournament, but... For these ones, I will be at home watching and just keeping an eye on things to update whatever I need to update. Um, but yeah, I've, I've attended many Premier League nights over the years and they're always a, a fantastic show. Uh, it's great to be in that environment, in that atmosphere. Um, but yeah, I will be uh, just enjoying it like most darts fans tonight and tomorrow, just watching that sea of orange and really taking it in uh, as a viewer, um, which I enjoy as well because once you get involved in a sport like darts, you do sometimes miss just being able to watch either on TV or even getting the crowd and taking the atmosphere that way. Well, man, listen, enjoy it tonight. Dart's certainly an exciting sport. It's amazing what, what the sport has become, and uh, I hope more people around the world get into it because it is so exciting. Chris Murphy at Chris Murphy 180 and the handle is literal. Just call him that because we see it on Twitter. Perfect darts there, 180. Love this guy behind the mic calling the darts, and he's got another one for the highlight reel after that spectacular Max Hot victory. Chris, thank you so much, man. I appreciate your time. Absolute pleasure. Thank you.